CataractCoach.com. Capsule break with IA. Why did this happen? And how do you finish the case? Our guest surgeon is Dr. Ahmed Al-Habash from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So here's the cataract. Look at it. That's a posterior polar. So we know there's going to be a challenge here. We sped up the video so we can get to just the good part. And that's going to be teaching you how to deal with this capsule or break and have a successful outcome. So in the phaco part, the nucleus is trenched down the middle. And then it, the nucleus will be split and the piece is brought up and chopped. So a stop and chop technique, very nice, good technique here, and very efficient. Nucleus is removed without any issues at all. Now we know in these posterior polar cases we can have an absent or, or weak or very fragile central posterior capsule here. That's the po nature of the posterior polar type cataract. So now cortex removal, all the cortex is removed quite nicely, but look carefully here. When it goes to remove the central opacity there, what's going to happen to that posterior capsule? Well, you probably predicted it. You're going to have a break in that central capsule right where the posterior polar opacity is. There's the break. Now what? Stay in position one. Very important. Keep your foot on position one. Keep the eye inflated. Do not let the anterior chamber collapse. Do not pull the phaco probe out of the eye at this point, or the IA probe out of the eye. Very, very important. That's going to keep your anterior hyaloid face intact, and it's going to prevent prolapse of vitreous into the anterior segment. Now, with the second hand through the side port incision, viscoelastic can be used to fill up the capsular bag, but also to create a barrier there. You want to create a barrier there, and you want to pressurize that anterior chamber again. That's a very nice result. You can also inject a little of this through that poster capsule opening, again, to provide a barrier effect. Now with the eye full of viscoelastic, it's a lot more stable and a lot less likelihood of having that vitreous prolapse. So now we can come out of the eye with the instrumentation. AC is still full of viscoelastic. Androhyloid face still intact. No vitreous prolapse. And now we're going to see Dr. Al-Habash create a posterior capsular rexus. So take this irregular shape of the posterior capsule opening and turn it into a round capsular rexus. So again, extra viscoelastic is always helpful. Using these micro capsular rexus forceps, he's going to grab that tissue and really create a nice round capsular rexus. The round caps rexus, if you can create one, is very helpful because it has no weak edges, right? It's a round circle and it won't run out. It's going to be as strong as your anterior caps rexus. So he's going to just go a little nick there with a needle to get it started. And he's going to grab with the forceps and create a very nice circular caps rexus in the posterior capsule. Notice how much extra viscoelastic is being used. Remember the saying, viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. So use as much viscoelastic as you need. He takes his time, he finishes it, and that now is a good, very strong posterior capsular rexus. There we go. The risk of this running out now is very low. It's a lot more control in this situation. So the IOL can then be placed inside the capsular bag. And what are the options? You could use a single piece acrylic lens, put it in the bag. You could also use a three piece lens. Three-piece lens may give you more options for placement. Sometimes you'd want to place that with the haptics and the sulcus and the optic captured. But here with a strong posterior capsule rexus, this single piece acrylic lens can go in the capsule bag and it'll be perfectly fine. So you can see that's placed appropriately and that posterior capsule opening now is covered by the optic. So that's a very helpful thing. The end of the case, we'll just remove the viscoelastic in a situation like this, I do not go behind the optic to remove viscoelastic. You don't want to do that. So here, just using a Simcoe cannula to flush out the anterior chamber, get that viscoelastic out. Again, be very cautious about going behind the posterior capsule because right now that optic is protecting it. It's a cover. It's blocking any vitreous from coming forwards. And now, notice, no collapse of the AC. Very important technique there. Injecting the balance out solution with one hand while pulling out the other instrument. The Simcoe cannula came out. 
and now plenty of hydration of the incisions. Keep that AC pressurized. That's the key move here. And now at the end, it looks great. So remember, posterior capsule rupture happens to all surgeons, even surgeons who have done thousands of surgeries. It's a low risk, but it's st still an actual real risk. And in a case like this, where there's a weakened posterior capsule, we can have this issue. In other cases we've shown you recently, you can also have the capsule rupture during FACO. And that's okay. If you manage it appropriately, you can clean it up and have a beautiful outcome just like this. Thank you, Dr. Al-Habash, for a beautiful video. We learned a lot. And you should check out cataractcoach.com, our free teaching website. You will learn a lot, too. Subscribe to our free daily email.